Well, welcome to Real Talk with Jordan Riley, where the real talk does not come from me. It comes directly from God's Word. And before we get started today, please consider subscribing to our channel, giving this a thumbs up, and supporting what we do by going to realtalkwithjordan.com. On today's episode, if you haven't noticed, there's a lot of false teachers like Benny Hinn and Joyce Meyer who are getting old, and they're soon to be done. Now, many of us are excited and go, whew, I'm glad that's over. We can get back to normal. Well, hold up a second. There's a whole new crop of young false teachers waiting to take your money and to deceive you. So are you ready? Let's go. I was like, God's going to visit me here. And sure enough, I had an angelic encounter. I mean, you want to know what God looks like. Hold your hand up. Come on. Look. As you can see, false teachers are everywhere, and like weeds, more and more are popping up every single day. And one of the questions I get the most is, Jordan, can you check out such and such a person to see if they're a false teacher? Now, I wish I had the time to do it, but I just don't. But I want you to know about these particular up and coming false teachers who are hungry for your money and they're dying to deceive you. Now, please don't come on here and say, you know, well, I already know about these people. Please do not do that. Or don't come on here and say, you know, well, I just can't watch. It's, it's just too hard to listen to their false teaching. Oh, brother. Come on, you guys. We need to be part of the solution and not part of the problem by burying our heads in the sand. Because just like in your lawn, weeds will continue to pop up and spread all over if we do nothing about them. So today, we're going to start looking at the up and coming false teachers that you may or may not have heard about. And no, this is not an exhaustive list. It's just the tip of the iceberg. Starting off, we're gonna look at Anne Voskamp. Anne is a Christian speaker who has a lot of things going for her that are wrong, actually. She teaches New Age mysticism. She also believes in panentheism, which means that events in the world change and affect God, which means God is a temporary being. Did you hear what I just said? Come on now, dog. That is absolute garbage. No, God is not temporary. He is everlasting to everlasting. He's the beginning and the end. I mean, come on, you guys. He's the alpha and the omega. Malachi chapter three, verse six. Numbers 23, verse 19 and James 1.17 all declare that God does not change. He's not temporary. The world doesn't cause him to change, not at all. She also teams up with a lot of false teachers and she preaches to men and has no problem with women pastors. That violates 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 33 through 38, and 2 John chapter 1, verses nine through 11. You will experience an abundant healing so to the degree that you are willing to not de deny or run away from the brokenness. Absolutely. I think brokenness really is a, f all dysfunction is a function of denying brokenness mm -hmm. and trying to hide it and mask it and numb it <laughs> and pretend it's not there as opposed to bringing it to God. Well, you just saw her there with false teacher, Christine Kane from Hillsong Church in Australia and Lori Crouch from TBN, both false teachers, by the way. She spouts things that feel good and that sound nice, but it's merely word salad and it goes against God's word. Hospitality is not a sidebar to our theology. Our hospitality is our theology. The very shape of Christianity and the cross itself is that of hospitality. The wide open arms of Jesus on that cross is the form of Christianity. And it's the form of the ultimate hospitality, the form of welcome. Come, I want you, I invite you, 
I want to be with you. So according to her, the cross is a sign of hospitality and a sign for everyone just to come. <laughs> no, are you kidding me? That is absolutely not true. No, the cross is about God's punishment for sin and how serious he takes it. It's a sign of God's great grace and mercy. It's also a sign of our great depravity and the consequences of sin. Not an open door for everyone just to come on in and come as you are and do what you want to do. Not at all. Did you also notice that she was standing there preaching in church to men and women? This is a violation of 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 11 through 14. Please mark and avoid Ann Voskamp. Next is Sean Bowles. This man is nothing more than a performer who does cold readings on stage to try and prove that he is hearing from God, which he absolutely is not. He is better known as the cell phone prophet who doesn't get his so-called prophetic words from God, he gets them from social media. And I'm looking for a dentist who you're either from the Ukraine or your parents were, and you moved to America, and I think to Washington State or Washington, D.C., there's a dentist who your parents were from the Ukraine, you moved into America, help me out here, is there a dentist? We've only done this in stadiums this big a few times, so it's a little hard. Every single thing that Sean says comes directly from the social media accounts of Dennis. This is not prophecy. This is a trick. All of the personal details about this young man were very easy to find on the internet. I found them, and in my video, you can go into more detail and see how everything Sean Bolt says is something he just copied from something he found online. It's not from God. I'm looking for a dentist who you're either from the Ukraine or your parents were. My family comes from a Ukrainian background. And you moved to America, and I think to Washington State or Washington, D.C., to Washington State or Washington, D.C. And I just see like um, um, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, not just send you, but commission you. Oh, no! Over the Ukraine and Eastern Europe, and something's gonna happen like you can't even dream of. Did you hear what he just said? Does that sound like any prophet in the Bible? I don't see any of the prophets or the apostles going around going, well, I think God is saying, or is there a Bartholomew in the crowd? Anyone that has a name that starts with a B? No, not at all. No one in the Bible went around saying, you know, I, I think God wants me to tell you something. Or have you ever been to Jerusalem? We need to talk. No, absolutely not. God spoke directly to the prophets and the apostles, and it was specific and it was 100% accurate. Sean is a fraud, and sadly, many people think he is biblical, but he is not. Here he is claiming to speak for God yet again, but clearly this shows that he is a bona fide false prophet. Just want to lend a little bit more prophetic perspective with some prophetic words, and one of them is God's desire is not for millions of people to die right now. That's not on his story. It's on his map. There's been a lot of reports that up to half the people just in our state of California would be infected with the virus. That's not in God's agenda. That's not in God's story. We're turning this by prayer. We're believing for this. God is going to bring both medical science and his healing power to fight this thing. We need to hear that over and over and over. This is not God's story for millions of people to die. That there's people alive right now who are supposed to be on the earth and God knew that. Did you hear that? He was supposedly speaking prophetically and said that millions of people would not die back in 2020. <laughs> hmm, let's see here. Liar, liar, pants on fire. According to Deuteronomy 18 verses 20 through 22, he should have been stoned to death. Aren't we glad for God's grace and mercy in 2024? This is what bugs me so much about false prophets. You know, whenever they tell us that something is going to happen and that God supposedly told them, it's always good news and it's always tickling ears. It's never about repenting or living holy or turning from evil. No, it's about breakthrough and overflow and abundance and prosperity, blah, 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 nonsense. And of course, it never comes to pass. Please mark and avoid Sean Bowles. Next is Katie Souza, who is one of the biggest Bible twisters I know. Hey everybody, it's Katie Souza. How are you doing? All right. 
Today, we're gonna talk about finances. And I'm gonna help you out to remove the things that are squeezing out your ability to gain in every area of your life, gain in your business, gain in your ministry, gain in your in your savings. So apparently something in those the words she's squeezing out, yes. Snake talk here. Yeah. Counts gaining in uh, your your uh, investments and things like that. We're gonna talk about how to break off spirits, specifically the Python spirit. Now let's all say it together. Said no verse ever. I mean the pi the pi. I can't even say that without laughing. The Python spirit. <laughs> no, that's nowhere found in the Bible. False teachers always make things up to sound nice or make it sound biblical, but yet it cannot be found anywhere in the Bible. Now, why do they do this? And you need to hear this. And this might sting a little bit, by the way. It's because according to Amos chapter 8, verses 11 and 12, most people these days do not know God's word. And that's a tragedy. Here in this next clip, you will hear her teach a bunch of nonsense that is nowhere found in God's word. She says that if you ascend to heaven, you don't have to be sick. <laughs> what? Do you understand there's life in the ascended place? If you are fighting health problems, disease problems, then get off of this earthly plane that is fleshly, devilish, and demonical and go up. Where rivers of living water are and the tree of life is in the center of the garden. Where the, the whole place is filled with light. When you go up, there's strength and energy available for you in your ascended place. The more you go up, the younger you're going to get. I'm working on it. I'm 60 now. I just turned 60 this year. The younger you're going to get. Hey! You guys, this is simply not biblical. No apostle ever taught this to anyone. And here she is on the Sid Roth show which should be yet another red flag. Hello, Sid Roth here with Katie Sousa, and we're going to be discussing a subject that very few people have heard. It's called the spirit of death. Katie, what is the spirit of death? Is that when you're just dying? No, the spirit of death is, is active in the world at every moment. He's putting death on people's bodies. He's causing rapid aging. He's causing disease disorder. He's also killing off finances and marriages and relationships. And Sid, honestly, I believe that when we transition to heaven uh, as a born again believer, that we just do that. We lay down at God's appointed time and we just transition to our place in glory. If the spirit of death is in the room at the time of our death, it usually means that we're dying of a disease or something that was not the will of God. Come on, you guys. This is pathetic and sad and leading people astray. This lady is a mouthpiece of Satan, and we need to mark and avoid Katie Souza. Next is Francis Chan, who sadly many people have given a pass to and think he's amazing, but he's not. Please hear me say that. He started out decent but has gone off the rails and now is a proven false teacher. Why you ask? Watch this. This is a, you've been accused of quote, this is a quote, sharing the stage with false teachers who will spend eternity in hell. Mm. They mentioned Benny Hinn, Todd White, Mike Bickle, and several others. Um, how do you respond to that? I know you get that a lot and I, um, in light of kind of what okay, you're saying. Okay, I'm not ready to speak on Benny. He kind of snuck up there for a couple of minutes and okay. anyways, <laughs> I don't, I, I mean, I'm not saying I, yeah, listen to that podcast. I explained the whole Benny story. Yeah, yeah. Okay. On his podcast, which yeah. thanks for doing that because it gave me a chance yeah. to just say, here's what I saw. Here's what happened. Uh, mm -hmm. um, I will speak for Mike Bickle for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, this is one of the godliest men I've ever met. Mm -hmm. Um, this man studies the word of God like you would not believe, like no one I've ever met. Well, I'm sorry, Francis, but you absolutely have it wrong. Mike is a false teacher and a proven false prophet, and he created IHOP, which is extremely unbiblical, and he was just fired after years of sexual misconduct against girls and women but it gets worse. Todd White, another guy I'm getting to know, I don't know him as well, 
but what frustrates me about that whole situation is here's a guy who shares the gospel more than anyone else in this room. You sure about that? We'll go up to strangers wherever you go and lay out the gospel. He had a radical conversion. Somehow he gets put on a stage and pretty soon he's asked all these questions that he's not totally prepared to nuance just perfectly like, like you and I could or you could, you know? So Todd White is an amazing man of God? No! And Todd White presents the gospel to everyone he comes up to? No! No. All Todd White does is pulls people's legs. That's what he does. See, Francis Chen gives just about every false teacher a pass, and he affirms them. Well, I just, uh, I just uh, want to say thank you for to you and to uh, all of you that are on this panel. Just the fact that you, you still love and honor one another, including me, is such a such a joy, because this is uh, this is what we we live for. We live for the beauty of the bride uh, to be seen the beauty of his church and uh, and you all contribute so richly. I'm so moved by the, the courage of Francis. I, I've just been really rocked by by your life and, and uh, I'm so I'm so thankful for your living broad uh, a bold proclamation of who Jesus is. I am just so thrilled with you. Can I just uh, say something? In response to that, um, uh, Bill, I <laughs> you blow me away with your words uh, and your heart behind them. You need to know that it's that heart that that changed me. It's it's that type of character and kindness that can only come from the Spirit to love like that in the midst of slander um what i mean it's i was one of those guys uh coming out of seminary i was one of those guys i've told mike bickle i studied you in seminary <laughs> you know <laughs> first time i met him i was i said yes to going to one thing but i there was a fear in me mm -hmm. and you know, Mike, you remember, I, maybe, I, I remember just sitting him down and I just had all these questions for him because the moment I said yes to speaking there, there was just a barrage of criticism. And right there again, you saw it. Francis Chan is affirming wolves in sheep's clothing and proves he has no discernment and he is violating God's word. Galatians 1 verses 6 through 9 says that anyone who teaches a different message than what Jesus and the apostles taught is accursed. But what do you expect from someone who believes this? And just like I wouldn't dare ever refer to Jesus as just an ordinary guy. None of us would. Like, are you kidding me? He was a man and somehow he was God all at once. You can't call him ordinary, but don't you understand? That's what he's saying about us now. Like right now you're looking at a person who is not just a person. Somehow God is in me and there's a sense in which I am like God and man all at once. Which I am like God and man all at once. Well, after watching that clip, I think we all just need to stop and praise Francis Almighty because he is like God and man all at once. Are you kidding me? No, he is not. Please mark and avoid Francis Chan. Finally is Isaiah Saldivar, who I believe is super dangerous as he is young, well-spoken, and very charismatic. He is part of the whole Demon Slayers movement, ooh, goody, which is total nonsense and extremely unbiblical. The things he teaches and believes goes against what the Bible teaches, just like this. The Christian who has the Holy Spirit also have a demon yeah, so this is a major question that we can probably go long on. We won't take a lot of time on it. But I tell people all the time, a Christian could have whatever they want. Like they say, a Christian can't have a demon. And I'm like, 
Uh, what else can they not have? Are they not allowed to have a donut? Are they not allowed to have a coffee? Now, what you just saw there is one of the biggest false teachings of Isaiah and many of his friends. Christians can have demons. Said no verse ever. That is a lie that goes against 1 John 4, verse 4, and 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Isaiah makes stuff up to keep people coming to him who are tricked into believing that they need deliverance which is totally fake, by the way. And his teachings are garbage and unbiblical like this. Imagine being on Judgment Day and you're wondering if you're getting in. Why would I wonder? Because you're gonna be standing next to the Apostle Paul. You're gonna say, oh, how are you? What's your name? Oh, my name's Paul. And you're gonna say, Paul? Yeah, oh yeah, the Apostle Paul. And starts telling you all the stuff he did in his life and right there about to get judged. And Paul goes, what's your name? Oh, what did you do? What's your story? I went to church on Sunday. Paul says, tell me your stories and you go, I don't have any stories. I never healed the sick. I never cast out demons. And Paul says, wait a minute. You don't know him then. You don't know the guy you're about to be judged on judgment day. So according to Isaiah Saldivar, if you have not done X amount of works, you're not gonna be let into heaven. <laughs> Embarrassing. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Absolutely not. That's another said no verse ever. That is a false gospel from the pit of hell. This man is dangerous, and he is deceiving every single person that follows him. Ephesians 2 verses 8 and 9, along with Isaiah 64 verse 6, and Romans chapter 4 verses 3 through 5, just to name a few, prove this man a liar. Isaiah is all about manipulation, and money is his God. He partners and affirms many false teachers like Sid Roth, and Greg Locke, and Daniel Adams, John Ramirez, and David Diga Hernandez, just to name a few. These people are evil and are deceiving people. Everyone that you saw in this episode, they are dangerous and they are rising in popularity. So we need to do three things. Number one, we need to never follow them. Number two, we need to never support them. And number three, we need to start warning people of them.